Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Welcome to another RTDS Technologies webinar. My name is Katie Sidwall. I'm with the sales and marketing team at RTDS, and I will be your host and moderator today. I'm joined by Dr. Ali Decordi, our machine modeling specialist. And our topic today is electric machine models for the RTDS simulator, and the application is polyphase machines. So perhaps you joined us for our webinar earlier this year, um, our first part to our machine webinar series, and the focus was generator protection and control testing. While you don't need to have seen that webinar to keep up with today's, I do recommend you check it out if you haven't seen it yet. It's a very nice complement to the material presented today. So we'll be discussing polyphase machines in detail today, which have a growing importance in the representation of the modern system. They have applications in uh, wind power systems, electric ships, and EV and traction systems. So Ali will go into the theory of these machine models and introduce you to the models we have available in RSCAD for the RTDS simulator via slides and a demonstration in the RSCAD software. Before he starts, I just want to start us off with a couple of housekeeping notes. There's a few different widgets you can use in the webinar platform. I highly recommend that you take advantage of Ali's expertise and ask questions throughout today's webinar. We'll be discussing some of the questions live at the end of the presentation and demo. So please put your questions in the Q&A widget and we will be addressing them throughout the presentation. There's also the chat widget. Don't use that for questions, but we'd love if you can introduce yourself, let us know where you're joining us from. Uh, it's great to see some familiar names, if not faces. Keep in mind that this webinar will be accessible on demand, so anyone can register for the webinar after it has occurred, and they can watch it on demand and still ask questions that way as well. Uh, it will also be uploaded to our YouTube channel, and we will be sending out those materials to you all next week. And that will include a, a Q&A document that summarizes all the questions that were asked today. I also want to tell you about another upcoming event we have. We are launching our User Spotlight Series 2.0. Um, this is sort of the virtual replacement for our users group meetings and the last time we did this it was very popular So we are kicking it off again. Our first session will be Wednesday, November 24th uh, a few weeks from now and we're featuring two presentations from RTDS simulator users So the Technical Research Center of Finland will be presenting on hybrid testing of power system protection communication over wireless 5g and Quanta Technology will be presenting on uh, investigating inverter-based resources impacts on the transmission line protection via hardware in the loop simulation. So they're both interesting um, sort of uh, protection testing applications in the context of grid modernization. So if you're interested, please head to this link and register for our first session and save your seat. It's free to attend. Finally, we don't have time today to go into the details of introducing our technology, EMT simulation, real-time operation, and hardware in the loop testing. So if you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend you check out our YouTube channel. We have some good uh, introductory videos that show the basics of this technology and how it's used. While Ali's demo will simply be showing uh, an all software simulation involving polyphase machines, keep in mind that the RTDS simulator enables closed loop or hardware in the loop testing. So machine controls or protection can be connected to the simulated environment in a closed loop. And that's helpful for de-risking novel schemes prior to implementation on the grid. With that, I'll hand things over to the very capable Ali and uh, I will see you in the Q&A. Hello everyone and thank you for coming to this presentation. My name is Ali Decordi and I work for RTDS Technologies in Winnipeg, Canada. The title of this presentation is Electric Machine Models in the RTDS Simulator and their Applications. Previously, we made a presentation with a similar title but focusing on generator protection and excitation. This is part two and we focus on polyphase electric machines. The content of this presentation is introduction and motives for modeling polyphase machines, 
challenges and a brief history, analysis of a polyphase synchronous machine, we look at developed models and some simulation results, we will look at applications, and at the end we look at the conclusions. Now what is a polyphase machine? A polyphase machine is a machine which has three or more phases on a stator or rotor. Typically we could have up to 18 to 21 phases. There are different types of polyphase machine. You could have symmetrical displacement as sh shown as an example here. You'll have n phases. They are symmetrically distributed on the around the stator area here for a synchronous machine. If you have n phases, the angular displacement between each two phases is 2 pi over n. There is another arrangement called the split phase or multi-star, multi-stator. Also, there are sometimes sets of three phases with no magnetic coupling between the phases. The coupling is done through mechanical shaft. What are the advantages of a polyphase machine? First, reduction in electric torque pulsation. The source of electric torque pulsation is either harmonics that come from network or space harmonics because of the winding distribution. And in both cases, having more than three phase could cause reduction in electric torque pulsation. Reliability and redundancy. With having more than three phases, you could lose one or two phases and still operate the machine um, till good, uh, till reasonable extent. You have lower current rating per phase and lower ratings for power electronic converters. Also, could reduce noise characteristics and copper losses. For these reasons, and uh, polyphase machines have applications in uh, naval applications such as submarines, electric ships, new schemes of wind turbines, electric traction, and electric vehicles. Now, uh, why do we model, want to model them in real time? As you know and previously discussed, a real time digital simulator is a simulator where all calculations are done and servicing of IOs are done within a time interval equal to the simulation time step. Simulation results must be in synchronism with the real world clock and with that you could do closed loop testing of equipment. We have customers in the industry who have asked us in the past few years for polyphase electric machines. The presentation here is um, the collection of work for the last maybe six, seven years on this uh, area. When we started this work, we faced some challenges. And the first one was what frame of reference should we use to solve the machine? Do we use DQ frame of reference or phase domain directly? Because we didn't know the DQ equivalent circuit of the machine, we thought maybe phase domain approach is better, but still you have challenges. You first you need to form the inductance matrix of the machine. Uh, you're facing with the lack of data, and you have uh, you might have more computational burden. Also, in terms of implementation and the platform, uh, we need to deal with the simulation time step, the size of simulation time step, and that depends on the application. And we weren't sure if we could do it in the smaller time steps. And for that reason, we said, should we do it on a processor, a FGA? These are all the questions that we face. Also, what integration algorithm should we use? Uh, can we still model saturation? Is it consistent with the existing models? So on and so forth. For that reason, we realized that we need to do a comprehensive analysis in rotor frame of reference for such machines. 
and a fundamental question arises here that is is there a dq transformation that applies to any number of phases the answer to that question is in history going back to sort of even beginning of electrical engineering you could categorize people who analyze machines in two main categories i'm sure there are more but from my point of view at this time 100 years later even more i see them in two categories the ones on based on intuition the ones who use two reaction theory starting with blundell doherty nickel and what is summarized by rh park what we know and as part transformation if you actually read pa park's paper you see the equations of the machine in dq frame of reference but you don't see a transformation called park's transformation one could extract it more on the mathematical side we have people on such as oliver heaviside charles fortescue which are more um, on the mathematics and analysis Fortescue's symmetrical component, Clark's alpha beta, and Kuhn's summarizing of analyzing electric machines in both uh, symmetrical component and alpha beta transformation. Now, the advantage of this method is that because Fortescue's symmetrical component transformation applies to any number of phases, you could extend its approach for modeling machines for any number of phases first let's start with symmetrical multi-phase synchronous machines the example that we saw here n stator phases are symmetrically distributed around the stator circumference now what what are the goals of such analysis first we need to understand the machine and winding arrangement you predict its behavior, come up with an equivalent circuit, and find a suitable method for simulation. To do that, let's go back to the uh, symmetrical components. Most of us in power system, we're familiar with um, symmetrical component transformation for three phases. However, the original transformation applies to any number of phases. If you read Fortescue's paper, which is around 114 pages, um, you could see the work applies to any number of phases. The background of work comes from analysis of induction machine with unbalance. Now let's focus on the main idea of symmetrical components. It basically says if n vectors in a plane can be decomposed to n set of vectors that they are symmetric or symmetrically distributed each have different characteristics first component is zero all the vectors are equal with the same angle positive sequence the we have n vectors with angular displacement of 2 pi over n, same size. And then you have second component and all the way you go to the n, which is negative sequence. In the form of uh, equations, here is the equation for symmetrical transformation for any number of phases. Here alpha is e to power j delta delta is 2 pi over n and n is the number of phases here your first row is your zero sequence your second row is positive sequence and your last row is negative sequence you have other rows associated with more positive and negative sequences this transformation has some characteristics. One is symmetry. Other is that any 
element in this transformation is the root of equation x2 power n equal to 1. It applies to any number of phases. You have inherent rotation here. If you look at the second row, from beginning to end, you go around the circle one time. A counterclockwise or positive direction rotation. On the third row, you go, you do that twice. On the last row, you go once on the negative direction, negative sequence. One to the last, you do that twice. Also, sum of elements in each row is zero except first row. So if you add them all together, it's zero except the first row, which is your homopolar zero sequence. If n is the number of phases is even, then you have another sequence which looks like zero sequence but it's not you flip-flop you go from zero to 100 degrees back and forth is transformation from symmetrical components to general two-phase alpha beta for an n-phase system and that is it's described here you here you have your symmetrical components if you want to go to alpha beta you can use this transformation. So zero sequence is the same, but alpha is a combination of positive and negative. Then you have other components here, which uh, are associated with the other zero sequences that other sequences in the symmetrical component transformation. The ones with you have twice the rotation here, you have alpha two and beta two. Now, having this transformation helped to come up with a transformation that takes us from phase domain, ABC2 domain, to alpha beta for any number of phases. And that is by multi multiplying the symmetrical component transformation and just the transformation in the previous page. Here is your transformation that takes you from ABC um, for any number of phases, phase from any number of phases to alpha beta or general two phase for any number of phases again you have your zero sequence your alpha or what you call alpha one or alpha two or u1 if you want to call it the last one is beta and then you come back towards the middle and if you have even number of phases you still have the w component To go to DQ trans domain, you multiply your alpha beta by your basically rotated, and depending on your convention, you could have plus minus sign here. As you see here, I only have done it to alpha and beta for the fundamental component of rotation. One could do it for uh, other rotations as well. Now, with this DQ transformation for any number of phases, or even if you do it in alpha, beta, or sequence mode, if you apply it to the phase domain inductance matrix, our n-phase machine, idealized machine, where windings are sinusoidally distributed, and the same thing for the permeance, you could see that this diagonalizes the inductance matrix. And here you have your inductance matrix for a stator for in DQ frame of reference, which is diagonalized. This allows us to have a DQ equivalent circuit for a symmetrical multiphase synchronous machine. Here is our DQ equivalent circuit. Uh, similar to the three phase, you have your D axis, Q axis, zero axis. However, you have additional circuits for other zero sequences and that is if you assume idealized machine with sinusoidal uh, distribution here you can see that i don't have coupling to rotor and i don't have that spec emf for other sequences if you there are some situations that if you 
consider space harmonics. We could show that for certain sequences that coupling takes place. So for a machine with more than three phase, you could show that some of these space harmonics produce useful torque. Now, let's go to the next category of the machines, multi-star synchronous machines. So far, we talked about symmetrical multiphase, where distribution of winding along the stator is symmetric. Angle between each two phase is 2 pi over n. Another category which is more popular, is used more, is called multiple star or multi star. Here you have um, sets of stars. Now, stars could have three phase or more than three phase or say five phase. You could have L sets and they are shifted with the angle of pi over n. The angle of pi over n is the best angle that gives you best um, torque reduction. Here again we have our a depiction of the multi-star synchronous machine. You have L winding sets with K phases. Number of phases is K multiplied by L. An angular displacement between each set is pi over N. Now, first step to analyze such a machine is transformation to fundamental winding configuration. What does that mean? If I flip, uh, say these C phases here, with, or use this transformation, you can see that your winding distribution is from zero to 180 degrees with the angle of the displacement of pi over n. Now that is called fundamental uh, winding configuration. This one can show, and the reason you can call it fundamental is that if for any number, any number of phases that you have, if you design a machine like that, your performance as good as um, any other machine. You could have a three phase machine with this configuration and it works as well as a conventional three phase machine. And also you can show that any configuration of the machines, including that symmetric distributed multi-phase, you can start from here and get there as well. Now let's compare these two again. We have 360 phase progression for symmetrically distributed multi-phase machine. For that, we use for Fortescue symmetrical component transformation because our phase progression was 360 degrees. Now, we have a phase progression of 180 degrees. And we need to have a new symmetrical component transformation which applies to 180 degrees phase progression because our phase progression in this machine is 180 degrees. And this is a transformation that you can work out and you can use. The way that you come up with this transformation for, say, symmetrical component or alpha beta is that that's the basic idea is that if you have, say, distribution with half progression of pi over n, you could start with the 2n phase machine with symmetric distributed all over the 360 degrees with the angular displacement of pi over 2n or 2 pi over 2n which is pi over n and eliminate half of the phases and if you do that you can work out a symmetrical component transformation for this progression as well as alphabet and that is your alpha beta transformation. This is the non orthogonal form. And here's an example for six phase. You have your alpha component, your beta component, and this one goes for alpha for the third harmonic. 
alpha for the fifth harmonic. So the harmonics are eliminated here. This slide is for treatment of leakage inductance matrix. This applies for both symmetrically distributed windings as well as multi-star or uh, 180 degrees phase progression situation. If your machine is the windings are symmetrically distributed over 360 degrees, 2 pi, your inductance matrix has the form of cyclic symmetry. Means that you start from one side, L0, L1, L2, and then you shift those, Six, shift those, put them on the second row, and you go to the third row. So even for a three-phase machine, we usually, if you look at the analysis, we consider that diagonal, but it's not really diagonal. Some of the leakages have cross-coupling effects, especially N leakages, they have cross-coupling. But when you apply alpha, beta, or DQ transformation, it diagonalizes them, and we can use that. If you have a multi-star arrangement or uh, 180 degree phase progression, the structure of the leakage inductance matrix is something called tuplet structure. Now, here's a strange structure a bit, but it has a, a rhythm. It starts, you say L0, L1, L2, but from the other side, minus L1, minus L2, minus L3. And the other rows have their their own sequence as well. If you apply the symmetrical component or alpha beta transformation for 180 degrees, degrees phase progression, you can also show that you can diagonalize this matrix as well. The same thing with the magnetizing components and you can end up with the DQ equivalent circuit for multi-star synchronous machine. Again, you have your D component and Q component as well as additional zero sequences for alpha, beta, and other components. Now let's take a look at the models that have been developed in the RTDS library based on the previous analysis. We have both symmetrically distributed polyphase and multi-star synchronous machines. Um, we could have up to 12 phase or up to 4 star 3 phase synchronous machine model. Uh, they're implemented for both main and sub-step. We have access to both ends of windings where you could have multiple neutrals. The table below shows the execution time based on the number of phases. So even for a 12 phase uh, machine, you could model it in 1.3 microsecond, which is not a lot. When you develop a model, the first thing you do, you, you validate it. Now the validation is done through comparison against um, offline program, which is with a smaller time step directly done in phase domain. And some of the scenarios that you you know the analytical solution for the result for example here we have short circuit results we have uh, here we have our three phase short circuit uh, sorry a single phase short circuit on a machine with three phases mm, because we have a library model we can compare it against the standard library model we have our offline solution this new model and as you can see the results are all matching we have a stator current here and here we have so we have the field current on top and the stator current at the bottom again repeated this scenario for a five phase machine single phase fault here's your field current and phase a the stator current for a multi-star machine, uh, here are some examples. For a two-star machine, we have a six-phase fault, your field current that is familiar to you, and the uh, stator phase A current. 
which, which will be this is similar the shapes are similar to three phase because basically you have all phases shorted and here is the result for a three phase machine single phase fault here we're going to talk about an application example uh, during the presentation I will describe the uh, circuit and some of the simulation results after that we stop and I will show you the actual simulation using RSCAT software so now let's describe this circuit this is a typical electric network for a marine vessel very simplified one we have a dual star generator to generate power we have diode rectifiers our DC bus we have battery and hotel load and here we have our propulsion system with a six phase uh, PMSM drive which has two three phase converters in the steady state let's look at the performance of the multi star generators this dual star generator as you can see these are the voltages and phase voltages and here on the second graph you could see the phase currents and as you can see you have six currents but you could see dual star arrangement of the currents you have pi over six phase shift between each set of stars here you have your electric torque and as you can see even you have harmonics the first harmonic that you see is your 12th harmonic of the component this is expected and you could see similar phenomena in HVDC on the DC current on the DC side current here's an example of the performance of the motor drive system during loss of converter leg uh, the PS PMSM permanent magnet synchronous machine is supplied through two three-phase converters during the fault a gating signal to phase A of converter 1 is suddenly blocked um, at this point here you block the gating signal the PWM and you could see the variation of the voltage here now one thing that I can show you later during the simulation is that even though you lose legs or you lose phases the drive system still can maintain the speed we have reached the conclusions of the presentation uh, in this presentation we have shown you how to use a general method of decoupling phase domain equations of the polyphase and multi-star synchronous machines in the area of electric machine they call that vector space decomposition but this whole thing is based on Fortescue's transformation we've seen detailed and flexible transient polyphase machines we have developed them and we have used them in the uh, practical simulations and we have shown a typical power system circuit of a marine vessel after the PowerPoint presentation I will stop and I will show you the um, demonstration of a power system circuit on a marine vessel using RSCAT software if you have any questions please send me an email this part of the presentation is focused on demonstrating a typical electric ship simulation um, before that I would like to show you the, the library of electric machine models maybe previously I have shown you in previous videos this is what we have in our library I'm showing using RSCAD v5 the arrangements looks better we've shown you the synchronous machine faulted synchronous machine model today's focus is on polyphase symmetrical polyphase and multi-star machines um, a quick look at the menus 
If you double click on one, as a user, you could choose number of phases for a, for a polyphase machine. You have something between a two up to twelve phases. For example, if we say I want to have five phases, that's how it looks like. If you would like to have access to both ends of the stator winding, you could do that. Or you say no, then you have the neutral only. You could disable damper windings. And similar to Mac V31, you could have format of electric machine models in the form of generator or impedances and time constants. The the voltage, base voltage, is line to neutral voltage. This is what you enter. And the reason for it is that when you have more than three phases, the phase to phase voltage is not clearly defined which phase to which phase. And that's, that, that's the reason that's better to enter the voltage, rated voltage, in form of line to neutral voltage, which is described here. Let's go. Here we have multi star machines. As a user, we can choose the number of stars. This particular model only has stars with three phases in each star. So you could have one star, which is basically a three phase machine, two a star, three a stars and four stars and the rest of the menus are similar to the multi polyphase symmetrical polyphase one important aspect is um, the menu for zero sequences you have your homopolar zero sequence and depending on how many stars or how many phases you choose you have menu for other zero sequences that you can enter if you do not know the value of these zero sequences you haven't measured them you you can assume that the windings are perfectly sinusoidally distributed and you could use the same value that you have for homopolar zero sequence or leakages now let's take a look at the circuit this system is made of one generator, is dual star generator. The rating of the generator is um, 1.6 kilovolt and 4 MVA, 50 hertz. Generator is connected to, if you look at the circuit, it's a dual star generator. You have your 4 MVA 1.6 kilovolt rating. It's connected to a DC bus through rectifiers. It, the DC bus charges the battery, or in case of not having a generator, the battery provides power to the rest of the system. We'll have our hotel load. And then we have our propulsion system, which is converters and a PMSM, permanent magnet synchronous motor. It's a dual star permanent magnet synchronous motor. It's 1.6 megawatt, 0.69 kilovolt, six phase. This data is uh, sort of arbitrary designed, doesn't come from any specific electric ship. It's done as a, a sort of a, um, a study design that we use. Now, the role we, we would like to maintain the DC bus voltage to plus minus um, 0.9 kilovolts, so total 1.8 kilovolts in a steady state, and that is done using the uh, excitation system here. We have the governor and exciter. 
very very simple excitation system very simple excited you have a reference you have your PI controller and through that I'm controlling the field voltage for this machine as usual the governor controls the speed and here again I'm using a multi mass when you use a multi mass we lock the machine and speed of the machine is decided by the output of the multi mass and we let the multi mass to be free and rotate freely the rectification is our valve group system but the way that the fire impulses are passed through it are they're always fired so they if it looks like that you are using diode rectifiers let's take a look here this is my excitation system and I, at the end i have my fire impulse generated generated i could use it as a proper thyristor controlled rectifier rectification system but i don't for this particular case I'm constantly firing it so it looks like a diode rectifier One more item that we would like to talk is the battery. You're probably familiar with the menus for this battery. You could choose a number of series and parallel stacks and choose the type of parameters that you would like to have. This is not the focus of this presentation, so we'll uh, just quickly dismiss it. Our hotel load is very simple. It's it's not 120 kilovolts, it's basically in a steady state I have 75 kilowatts. Um, and the this part, which is PMSM drive, is basically used you could decouple control to control the torque of the uh, motor and using that we control the speed. So let's take a look at the controls. Now, in addition to the machine models that we have, we have also produced uh, control components that for multi-phase or multi-star systems, uh, you go from ABC or phase domain to alpha, beta, and DQ domain. You can find these in the library. And by the, using this transformation, you find D and Q component of a stator current. And then you go to your DQ decouple control strategy and you control your converters. Now, the D, if you want to have more details, you could take a look at our wind turbine systems in the samples directory. Previously, I have mentioned that multi star machines have applications both in naval and renewable energies. Now this system that I'm showing you is similar to what you could have in the uh, wind turbine case. So if you have a sample directory case or you have your own case, you could take advantage of this system and what you already have and replace your machines with multi-star machines. Here I have my speed order. The main controller here controls the speed of the motor and by controlling the Q component of the current, I control the torque and the speed in, in general. Once I find my references for modulation waveforms, I bring them to ABC frame and I pass it to the firing pulse generation unit. Let's take a look at the propulsion load. It also has a multi mass. It only has two masses for now. Um, the relation between torque and mechanical torque and the speed of a load is usually proportional to torque is proportional to the square of the speed, which is represented here. The slider, which is showing the f sort of the stiffness of the load, can be used to show that produce that 
you could change the amount of torque that's needed for a certain speed, basically a stiffness of the mechanical load. And here we're going to take a look at the simulation and operation of the this case. I'm going to start my simulation case. We have um, our graphic for synchronous generator, diode rectifier, DC bus, our battery, hotel load, inverter, and PMSM, basically propulsion system. Um, during a steady state, the set point of um, excitation system is set to 1.8 kilovolt, and that's kept by the exciter. So we have DC bus 1.8. Our battery has started charging because now the power comes from the generator, the breaker is closed. And our motor, a hotel is absorbing around 75 kilowatt, kilowatt and the propulsion system is absorbing around one, one and a half megawatts. Speed is controlled at one per unit. I'm going to bring the exciter, excitation system or generator controls box into the video here. This is a slider to control the DC bus voltage. It's set to 1.8 at this point. I'm going to change it to 1.6. As you can see, the the controls take down the voltage to 1.6 kilovolt. We can go back to our rated value of 1.8. I'll update the plots and let's take a look at our plots here. Here I have my Voltages. Let's take a zoom into it. We have voltages, phase voltages of the six phase generator, dual star, and you have our currents. And as you can see, that dual star arrangement uh, easily can be seen. Can be seen here. You have um, 30 degrees angle between each uh, set. going to put that uh, exciter, excitation system box away and let us focus on DC bus. We have the charge of the battery going up and this is our positive negative voltages. Now I mentioned that currently the battery is getting charged because of the this breaker is closed. If I Open the breaker. Now, this battery needs to provide power to the hotel load as well as propulsion system. And as you can see, the power is started uh, draining from the battery. The state of charge is decreasing. You can close that again. And if you want to actually see could still see that the, I'm maintaining my full power and full SP for that uh, motor. Can close it again. Let us take a look at control of the uh, motor or propulsion system. In a steady state, we said to control the speed to one per unit and the motor has around one and a half megawatt of power 
this is the slider to control the speed. You can bring control the speed to different values, say 0 0.8. Speed is reduced to desired value of 0.8, and accordingly the power also changes. Now, if we take a look here, Going to update plots here for this plot that I have locked. Here I have the currents for the machine, speed, electric torque, P and Q, DC bus voltage, and uh, DC bus currents. If you go lower, you have the power of the motor. And on this side, I have the firing pulses as well as the modulation waves, other things related to the converter, control converter. One thing I would like to do is to, if you look here, I have switches that with using them, I can block the firing pulse coming to any legs of and converters so I can disable any of these six phases for the machine that I have and previously I have mentioned that by having multi polyphase machines you could lose one or two phases and still operate the machine here I'm going to block the fire impulses going to phase A of the converter and we'll take a look at the speed and see how it changes now speed is set to 0.8 I'm blocking fire impulse for phase A you have some distortions but you still you can maintain the speed yes, as you can see here let's take a look um, here is where I block the fire impulses to phase A. You don't see them anymore. Speed is still, you have some oscillating torque. Your speed is still reasonable to what you have desired to have. I'm going to update the plots and take a look at this point. We have some oscillations maybe around 5% or so for the speed, but it still is, is acceptable to, to what you like to have. Now the more phases that you have, the, the smoother you can control the torque and the speed. Now if you if you are interested and if you're our customer we can pass you this case and you can um, investigate it further there's also a couple of papers that we have published in IPSD you can take a look if you have any further questions please let me know and I will respond to you thank you very much and I hope you have a nice day